Mondays, hence it being Monday. It's interesting, in this light with me having this t-shirt on, it actually looks as if this is the floor is some sort of background. Um, the record player I always recommend. Uh, if you want to get an entry level record player, then a planer is a very good idea. Um, let's get yourself a little Journey, Toto, and Billy Idol touring together. That's a biggie. What's up, Todd Margolis? So please, God, help me. All right. Um, so I guess the uh, big announcement of the day is we have, um, it looks like we've we found a little independent podcasting company that's uh, going to uh, help get us onto the Spotify's and all that business. And we have business and we have booked the uh, project turntables those are the ones um and then uh so we booked the recording date for the first podcast episode which is going to be january 11th it's going to be uh me and wendy doing uh let's go crazy um with a live audience, so there will be tickets available. I'm keeping them to a very reasonable thirty dollars plus fees, which aren't that many because it's an independent fucking joint. But the only codicil is that the only nights they would give us is a uh, Tuesday night, which sucks. Would have preferred a Friday or a Saturday, preferably a Saturday. But I figure it's probably worth it to go and get to see uh, Metal Militia. Uh, to get to see, um, we're also going to be filming it so that we can, uh, then hawk it for the TV show. You know what I'm saying? Shoot the video, the fucking film, the podcast. <laughs> it becomes a TV show. So that's going to be a good one. Wendy agreed to it today, so it's all happening. So it's going to be at the Regent Theater downtown here in Los Angeles. 400 people. So we're going to get some work going. But figure, um, you know, figure it's going to be a good one. So, all right, let's get to Metal Monday, shall we? Sure. Some interesting factoids I found out about this thing while uh, while the co while the uh, while I was doing the research for uh, don't concern yourself with the copyright. That's why I'm getting to do a podcast. I've already done it all. That's if I'm doing a podcast and a TV show, it means that those things are already being thought about. <laughs> all right, moving on. Metallica, 1989, and dot dot dot. Oh, it's on this one. Dot, 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 right there. There you go. Ellipses, my favorite of all of the punctuation. Do you have a favorite punctuation? Um, I do. It's the ellipses. That's why all of my sentences start with dot, dot, dot. Try having that OCD. Every text I send. Dot, 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 and justice for all. Produced by Fleming Rasmussen, of course, the man whose crew tried to convince him not to record them the first time. Um, so, uh, he's back. You know what I'm saying? Um, this was their fourth album, the first to feature a young Jason Newsted on the old uh, Bassomatic. Uh, they recorded it over four months in Los Angeles. Originally, Mike Klink was supposed to do it. Mike Klink, uh, of course, of the uh, the Guns N' Roses, Mike Klink. Uh, did Appetite for Destruction. Met him. Lovely chap. Uh, Mike Klink was stated to produce when uh, Fleming Rasmussen's schedule wouldn't allow. But then they ended up doing the record and were pretty disappointed in the work. And then Fleming Rasmussen listened to the uh, tracking and was like, yeah, no, we got to redo this. So they went uh, into a studio and to, uh, they re-recorded using three separate reels. This blows my mind. One reel for guitars, one reel for drums, and one reel for vocals and everything else. I don't even know how that works. 
Everyone recorded separately. Jason Newstead uh, sort of spoke of uh, him recording with an engineer, an assistant engineer, and being completely separated from the band and the whole band, so just tracking on their own. Um, unfortunately, Fleming Rasmussen was not there for the mixing, and uh, he's pretty sure that the dudes that mixed it didn't use any room mics. They used all the close mics on everything, which is why it sounds so claustrophobic and tiny. Um, and uh, Lars blames the... Because uh, he had originally recorded a lot of uh, room tone to be able to add that to give the record some fucking... some air. Uh, Lars blames their ruined hearing from uh, touring so much for the absence of low level in the bass. It was nothing to do with wanting to shun Jason Newstead. And that makes sense. I mean, you wouldn't want to shun somebody by destroying your own record. Um, that's pretty self-destructive. Uh, the song itself was written by James and Lars about a soldier losing his limbs, his jaw, and his sight. It's a similar take as Johnny Got His Gun, which is the movie that the, um, that the um, song uh, uses for the video around the performances. It's a great video. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's harrowing and eventually, uh, he, uh, does Morse code with his head to get them. And he, it says, kill me, kill me, which is what the end of the whole thing is about. Um, anyway, Hetfield's opening chord progression was influenced by Venom's buried alive. I guess you probably noticed that. And, um, this was the first Metallica song to get a video. I was working at the Herman's World of Sporting Goods in the Gonorrhea Mall in White Plains, I believe, when this was released. Um, 1989, sounds about right. I, if not, I was at the uh, Sam Goody, but I think I was at the, the Herman's World of Sporting Goods. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm into Metallica because this shit's musical as fuck. All right, let's check out this young Lars Ulrich on drums. don't actually uh That is a fucking really absurd drum sound. I did like in the stereo headphones, there's like room flare around the kick that doesn't really make a lot of sense. There's the, the it's the snare is really tight in the it's very weird, and then the toms are fully. Like these toms are fucking. Totally dry. What a bizarre. Don't forget, he did get lessons after this, and markedly, he knew that he needed to step it up, and he did. I didn't realize that you did snares on both hits. Man, those 
kicks are. Scar song. Bam, ba da bam, ba da bam, bam. Look at the little walk around the kit. That's a very, very unusual drum sound. Good grief. Those kicks are fucking crazy. You can hear the heads moving. All right, so on bass, Jason Newsted, and nobody's ever heard this. Toby Wright's in here who assistant engineered this. Toby Wright, did you assistant engineer? So you think you could get that drum sound again? Really? It's very weird, man. Like, what on earth? But when you put it with the bass... You, uh, did you do, who was the one who sat and assistant engineered while this happened? This bass line is fucking prehistoric. Oh, nice. 
All right. Well, we should probably do this song at that studio. Part of your opening celebrations. So you were the one who recorded this with ba- this bass line is fucking sick. I mean, the thing to remember is that you know Jason Newstead is 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 taking the place of one of the greatest bass players of all fucking time. As we discussed in earlier fucking Metal Mondays, they you know they moved to San Francisco because he was like, "Yeah, I'll be in your fucking band, but I'm not moving to L.A." Eat shit. Come to Cal. Come, come up here. So was uh, so you know Jason's like gonna do this. So his baseline is fucking triumph. guys work on this did he have uh, all the parts like this bit what the fuck is he doing what the fuck is he doing Six months for the drums, one month for the rest of the record. Bass done in a week for the whole record. This bit. fun track. Amazing. 
Amazing. God, this must have been fun to sit there, Toby. say Toby is that um, the editing of the two inch tape on the drum tracks is flawless Six months of editing drum takes with a fucking razor blade <laughs> and tape. Oh my god, how many of you were there? A, how many of you were there? And how long did you work in shifts? fucking tape on your own you cut the tape on your own dude Wait, 16 to 18 hours a day? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's called one for a reason. Yeah, that's a very good point. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I feel almost like... I think I feel almost like we have to listen. <laughs> we have to listen to the whole drum take just on its own, just out of respect. Like we just got to go through it. I'm sorry, people. It's fucking. It's seven minutes of just drums, but we have to listen for the fact that you can't tell where the. can't tell anything.
I mean, what is what are the uh, what what the fuck is going on on this kick drum? Is it two? Is it two heads, front and back? What are you feeding? What are you feeding the? Um, Lars and I invented the kick sound as we were going along. He wanted to have something completely different that had never been heard before. This is the product of our work. Well, you know what? I'll tell you. Yeah, man, this kick drum sound has never existed before. Or heard since, no. There's so much fucking bottom end on it. And then, and then the fucking toms are completely, did you lift those out of like whatever? So there's a, there's clearly like a, a, um, a verb that you're feeding stuff through, right? So, that kick isn't all coming from the room at that studio. Totally dry. Wow, so this fucking, this reverb is actually from the room? Jesus, How's, what's the size of this drum room? What, how big was the live room to get that? crash so you're not you're not tr I mean it's fucking eight are you triggering something with this snare is there any fuckery in the snare department as far as like making a flare behind it that's being triggered, or is this all 50 by 60, one on one recording? 50 by 60. Wow. It really is. Twenty two foot ceilings. Well, there you go. And then this. Yeah, that's a huge fucking space to record in. It's so, it's like. But it's like. Like the. 
Like this, what is this, what is this, what is this sub-frequency on these kicks? Where's that coming from, Toby? Hertz captured in the tuning of the drum. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> That's so fucking bonkers. That's so bonkers. You've got fucking snare heads with notes from this record on them. What? All right. All right. We're going to do this one live, you and I, Tobles. There's a measurable amount of time between the the sound of the impact So Toby when you're doing the editing is Lars in there with you doing the editing or is it like edit the tape and then I'm going to come in and get working on the sound with you Told me what to edit. What the fuck? He told me what to edit as we went along. We only ended up with 45 seconds of recorded music per 16 to 18 hour day. Holy shit. Uh, I'm amending the card. 45 seconds of audio. (laughs) 
that's So here's a question, man. So you're spending that amount of time with Lars. What is, you know, like, what does the relationship end up being? Because there's this weird thing, right? We, you know, like you make records with people and you become really sort of, you know, in intensely involved in each other's lives. And then you go your own separate ways. So, you know, what is the... Um, What you know? What what's the relationship that you have with Lars at that point? And you you know you know Mike Elizondo Jr. I know Mike. Like, come on, dude. Could you imagine? Is there anyone in the fucking industry now who would spend sixteen to eighteen hours cutting tape? Forty five seconds. Never. There's nobody, Mike, in the industry who would devote, would sit there with a drummer, cutting fucking two-inch tape by hand and getting 45 seconds of audio out of 16 to 18 hour days. I mean, hold on, everybody. I mean, I'm sorry that <laughs> the morning show radio. Uh... So you guys are you guys are uh, you guys are friends. That's fucking awesome. We should get him to come down and do it. Hey, do you think Lars and you would come down and do the TV show slash podcast together? We'll fly him in. On, uh, I'll get him in on Ed Force One. I'll just make a couple fucking phone calls. Let's listen to the ending. <laughs> All right, so the reason it took so long, everybody, is that they taped they recorded all the drums then back in the day 89 you went in and you actually took the tape the physical tape and you cut it with a razor blade and then you stuck it with with sticky tape and you would have all these pieces put together so 45 seconds it took 16 to 18 hours of work to get 45 seconds of a song done so when a song is seven minutes long, you do the fucking math on how many days it takes. Yeah, there's no undo, Mike. Exactly. You fuck up a fucking, you fuck up a cut. I forget who it was. Somebody was talking about, you know, uh, oh, Jesus. It might have been Jeff Murray. Oh, Cables. I'm going to break another countryman. That's just what I want to do. Um, this fucking company. Yeah, the I uh, apologize for that. It was the fucking cable management. Yeah, it's like if you cut the tape, you cut the master. You were fucked. All right, so we've now had our brains blasted. Let's get back to the metal section. Let's just finish up listening to the bass and drums. They did record the song, but in order to get the performances perfectly correct, you have you they took the best bits.
right. Okay, hold on. Well, that's not entirely true. We edited it as we went along. We don't record the entire song and then pick out the best bits. We built it as we went. Now, hold on. Then how the how does that work? How does that work? This is why we need to be talking in person. We edited it as we went along. So how did you – so was he playing to – is he playing to a uh, – is he playing to a click? Who's play? yeah, exactly. Everyone's like, what? Is he playing to a click and nobody else is playing and he's just remembering the order of the pieces of the song? Or is he going until you get a good solid verse and then you move on to the next? Like, how the fuck? What the fuck is this process? All right. Okay, here we go. James laid down a scratch guitar track and we recorded it to that arrangement. Ah. Okay. So. uh, That's that's crazy talk. H is for Hawaii. Absolutely crazy talk. Um. So Headfield lays down a scratch, and then Lars plays each piece. You can't do that. Like, Dean, we've already please, been doing this for a year. You can't just add it because it cuts the audio out. It's, it, it fucks everything up. We've, we're, we've been doing this a while, champ. You got it. Can't just, can't just do it. I don't know, man. It was the, it was the 80s. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, Listen to this shit. Coming over the top of the bucket. question would you have done anything differently tubes <laughs> that's it After the experience, I would never change a thing. Yeah, no, I can imagine that the product is this. Like it needed the it needed the trials and tribulations to get it to be this. I mean, there's a reason I you know this was the song that made me go. Oh yeah, I can pay attention to Metallica. It didn't resonate with me prior, uh, and then this thing showed up, and I was like, oh okay, this is some fucking. These guys are. This is way more substantial. Then you know the the what I thought was just you know it was like the that aggressive fucking you know didn't really do it doesn't have enough melody for me and then this thing was like here's a bunch of melody sound effects that's on that track so we'll start with this what 
man, y'all are missing out on headphones. Alright, so I'm gonna put the other <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright, so the the way they stem these fucking things out is, you know, but we have access to these. I would fix it for the live because I'm listening through for the first time. So it goes from that, on guitar track two, it picks back up. So that's going underneath these leads. These noodly bits. But over the top of it is this. Christ. What? What the fuck is that turnaround? And then a fucking hammer on? Y'all are missing out on fucking stereo, I'm telling you. But here's the great <sighs> thing that sucks is the podcast. I'm not going to be able to sit here and play this shit over and over and over again. It's so annoying. We got to do this again. We can do it again when we get stereo back. Listen to this shit. This is Toby. What the fuck is going on here? One guitar on either side and then one down the middle? Shit, Metallica are fucking amazing. These acoustics attract. The reason it's mono is because Instagram fucking is in mono and then it was stereo and now it's back to mono again. The fucking acoustic sound, Toby. All right, so underneath that on guitar stem two is this.
we'll put that in with the other one she said smiling Holy shit, man. That's that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Line of notes painstakingly state that it is, in fact, all James. Uh, but uh, Kirk plays the lead. This is fucking bonkers. This is bonkers. Masterpiece. That's a masterpiece. The fact that we have never been allowed to hear what Jason Newstead has actually crafted for this this song is criminal. <laughs> fuck are Metallica doing here? Then to this. 
a straight fucking knee to the testicles coming in off the top of that shit. What? This is Prague at like... cranking up there what's that is that a what wh- is this where's that Wang? where are you pulling that from that's fucking sick shall we? Touches on that crazy shit. Fucking fucking old school. Touches on everything.
it's yeah, you guys were doing this. Come on, Instagram with the fucking stereo. This is fucking insane. This is two performances, Toby. Every single movement is exactly matched to the point where it it could almost be a plug-in. Every single, it's perfect. Every chicken again, like the fucking, the, the, that's, that's insane. Yeah, the Blue Angels of Metal. This is fucking... This is nasty. (laughs) All right, so let's do this. Let's just do uh, the guitars and the bass. Bass up mix, everybody. Bass is currently at probably close to 10 dB over mix. You're welcome, bass. Boosted.
my purple banana bit. Fucking link up for the dig -dig 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 and fucking Jason is holding it all together. What's going on at the end here, please? Hold, there's a little, there's a little shh thing. Oh, it's just that little guitar. That, this is, this is ridiculous, man. Release the fucking bass up mixes, Metallica. Come on, man. Like, I know you gotta fucking keep your history intact and all that, but nonetheless, man, if you could admit that maybe it sounds a little bit gnarlier with the fucking bass up mix. I mean, this is fucking sick. This engine room. It's a fucking, it's a tank, man. It's a fucking tank.
bass up mix. It's fuck. It's on. It's fuck. It's on. All right, man. So the uh, this vocal stem is great, but then it it's also great, and then they have acoustic guitar in it. But when the acoustic guitar comes in in the vocal track, it's pretty damn good. So uh, I'm sure that James himself would be irked at the pretension of asking everybody to shut up for Jason Newsted. I mean, for a, a James Headfield fucking vocal. But uh, we should shut the chat down anyway. All right. Put your um, put your phones to one side. Put your tablets to one side. Put your keyboards to one side. Just let your let your ear eyes show you everything. All right. I can't remember anything. Can't tell if this is true or dream. Deep down inside, I feel the scream. This terrible silence stops me. Now that the war is through with me, I'm waking up, I cannot see that there's not much left of me. Nothing is real but pain now. Hold my breath as I wish for death. Oh, please, God, wake me. Back in the womb, it's much too real. In pumps life that I must feel But can't look forward to reveal Look to the time when I live Fed through the tube that sticks in me Just like a wartime novelty Tied to machines that make me be Cut this life off from me Hold my breath as I wish for death Oh, please, God, wake me! just realized when listening to the lyrics the one now I'm just one cuz he's it's that's terrifyingly claustrophobic this beautiful reverbed delay going into this acoustic coming out of the chorus Cut this life off from me hold my breath first off this is harmony here fed to the tube that sticks in me just like a wartime novelty Tied to machines that make me be Cut this life off from me In pumps life that I must feel But can't look forward to So Toby, was he, uh... I've read a couple of things that he was saying that he was a little reticent to be singing to this in this sort of way Was that, uh, was that what was happening? Cut this life off from... Was he in there, you know, no doubts? 
Cut this life off from me Hold my breath as I wish for death Oh please God wake me Gorgeous Said it's annoying that the fucking acoustics are are there. All right, and then of course the landmines section. All right, what we're gonna do is I'm not gonna, we're not gonna fuck around. We're just gonna listen. I'll bring in I'll bring in Lars later on. We're not gonna do this like slowly introducing everything because we need to we need to hear this bass line until the kicks come in when I decide to, because I want to hear with the vocal.
put out the fucking bass up mixes. Put up, put out the bases up mixes. Holy shit, this is a completely different record. This is really getting to show everybody's work, including Toby's. This is fucking maniacal, man. When you get to hear all of the, everything that was intended, that's the thing, man. The mix was not the intention. The mix was fucked by a bunch of shit, whatever it was. That's not a, this, this was the intention. Holy fuck, man. You can hear all of the fucking details that were, that were picked. Like that? Those moves? Said I should put out the bass up version on Napster. That would be brilliant. all the sense in the world.
I mean, all of these are so much fucking fuller with the goddamn bass in them. All of this, this whole riff becomes maniacal. Before it was, was cool. Now it becomes maniacal, man. This shit, hard as fuck is right. Yeah, he may have done the bass up mix, but I'm willing to bet you that that dude, <laughs> that dude didn't push it to 10 dB over mix. I'll tell you that right now. That's not a sensible choice. It's perfect. This is absolutely fucking insane. It's a very good point. So many levels to the writing, it never gets all like I could listen to it all over again and I would notice a whole bunch of stuff. It really, you know, sincerely, the effect of this in stereo with this bass up is it's what you want the song to be doing. Newstead is pr providing like a fucking steel I beam. He's, he's actually holding it all together. He's holding it all together. He's even holding Lars in place. Like the, by removing this bass. The band actually robbed themselves, and they should repair the damage solely so that everybody can really hear how fucking brilliant this is. Like, that's what they're doing. They're actually, they're, not only, obviously, Toby's brilliance, and but the, the, which is part of the brilliance, because the choices that were made, this bass tone, when put into that place, is fucking relentless. It is, a, it is its own fucking engine. And then Lars is fucking on, it, it, like, Lars is on top of it, like, holding on and giving the cylinders the fucking sound of them. 
They are they are robbing their they are actually robbing to say that they're doing it for their legacy because their legacy must stay, you know, in stasis. I don't agree with that. You're actually harming your legacy because people aren't going. People are unaware as of right now that you you didn't suddenly get brilliant at the, the fucking black album when everybody else woke up to it. You guys were were nuanced brilliance in 1989 after losing fucking Cliff. And Jason comes in and provides this, and we have never got to hear why Jason was the choice. And somebody was like, "He's, he, you know, like he's better than Cliff. He's not better than Cliff. He's different to Cliff. Cliff was was an epic genius, a maestro of the instrument, like Jacko of metal. Newstead's not Jacko of metal, but Newstead's choices in this thing are fucking brilliant." And we should all get to hear it. We should get to hear the record as intended. This must have sounded fucking sick. Anyway, thank you so much to Toby Wright, producer. Show the work, gentlemen. Show the work. And Cliff's. All of the stuff, man. Don't be precious about your fucking legacy. It's silliness. You can make more enlightened choices now because we're more enlightened people. You can make different artistic choices. Like, don't go back and re-record the shit. I get that. But go back and... And not even, like, don't sound replace the drums and all that. I totally get that bit. Like, that completely makes sense. Now you're starting to fuck around. But certainly, when you've got geniuses at that level and you're, you know, it's... Everybody should hear it. Get out of your own way, you know? Just let everybody love you for being brilliant. All right, I'm out of here. Have yourselves a uh, great rest of the evening. Uh, January 11th, we shall be doing um, Prince with uh, Wendy Melvoin down at the old Regent here in L.A. You're going to want to be at that. It's going to be fucking um, brilliant. And uh, I will see you all back here tomorrow for night. And MJ Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific Time. I'm going to be on live with uh, Mr. Law. That's going to be an adventure. Can't wait to see what that conversation is going to be like. Um, thank you, Toby Wright Producer. You actually rock. Uh, and I will uh, see you all here. If you want to donate to the cause, please do so. The session website.com. Um, is there's a PayPal, or if you want to do it through Venmo, it's Brit Dick, B R I T D I C K. It's donation based, they take no cash for it. Um, you know, ticket link will go out. Just get on the session website, go, go there and sign up for the uh, sign up for the email link. All right, tomorrow's Tuesday. That's right, tomorrow's Tuesday, Tuesday. I've lost the day already. Uh, yeah, pain. We're doing pain tomorrow night, I believe, is Tuesday, Tuesday with the Jimmy Eat Worlds. So see you here for that. Have a uh, have a great time. Not coming east anymore, going straight to England. So, all right. So, see you back here tomorrow. Fuck Nazis, fuck judges who seem to think that uh, they get to decide crazy shit in their own courthouses about the truth. That's not how the, uh, it's not how the judicial branch is supposed to work. Talk to you all later. Fuck Nazis. I'm going to leave it up for 24 hours, so uh, tell your metal friends.